This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. Okay, so let's go through and have a look at a basic consolidation example that goes through and looks at a mid-year acquisition, but in answering the question also goes through there and looks at the pro forma for our group statement or profit or loss question if we're to go through there and get that within an exam style question. So what have we got? Uh, if we go through and always read the requirement first, make sure you're happy with what it is asking you. So here it wants us to prepare a consolidated statement of profit or loss. So there's no other comprehensive income. It's just purely revenue down to profit for the year. Uh, we're told that it is for the VEDA group. So therefore VEDA must be the parent. And our reporting date is the year ended the 31st of December 20x5. That's vitally important that you identify the reporting date so that you can then identify if there is a mid-year acquisition within the question. How do you identify if there's a mid-year acquisition within the question? Well, it effectively tells you without saying there is a mid-year acquisition within this question. Because what you've got there, if you look at the final piece, is it there of additional information what you can go through and see there is it says assume that your profits accrue evenly now if your profits are accruing evenly the reason why they're telling you that is because effectively you're going to have to prorate the revenues you're going to have to prorate the costs and if they're accruing evenly the easiest way to do it is to take a number of twelfths so that key bit there is telling you within a question that there is a mid-year acquisition. And the examiner has pretty much always said that in every exam question. So it's a pretty much a giveaway, isn't it? Uh, so what you can see there, we know that Vader is the parent. By default, we must have there that Maul is the subsidiary. Uh, and we can identify that in the first piece of additional information. We can say that that we acquired 80% of the equity shares of Maul. So therefore, we control Maul. Maul is a subsidiary and the non-controlling interest own how much? Yeah, nice and easy 20%, isn't it? The key bit within this question, however, is that we know that there is a mid-year acquisition. When was it acquired? Well, this subsidiary was acquired on the 1st of July 20x5. So you can use your fingers if you so wish. July, August, September, October, November, December. Okay, so that's six months. Six. The number of times Liverpool have won the European Cup as well. There we go. Just purely by coincidence. So we have a mid-year acquisition. We have the six months. So when we consolidate the subsidiary, we're going to have to take six twelfths of those results aren't we okay that's whereby we will prorate everything on a line by line basis before we then consolidate it and add it across to the results in full of the parent isn't it uh, other bits and pieces that we've got is that we're told that the non-controlling interest is measured there at fair value so if we had to calculate goodwill within a question potentially uh, then you would be calculating the full goodwill using the fair value of the non-controlling interest. That's important here, because if you look at part three, uh, it says the, that there was an impairment review, and it revealed that the impairment was $20,000. Now that's gonna be important, isn't it? Because we, when we go back there to have a look at the standard pro forma, the focus here is on that impairment. The goodwill, the NCI, is measured at the fair value. So that impairment will appear within S's column. Why? Because then when we go through there and take the non-controlling interest share of S's profits for the year, the non-controlling interest will get that share of the impairment. Uh, other bits as well. Uh, we're told there that more, the subsidiary declared a dividend. Is it there of $10,000? So again, what we need to go through and do there is that we need to make sure that we adjust within our pro forma uh, and remove the dividend that the parent will have received from S. So when we're removing our share of that dividend, we need to remove, don't we, 
is it 80 percent because that's the percentage that p vader will have recorded as it is the parent company it will record its share of that dividend so therefore we will need to eliminate its share of that dividend on consolidation okay why because we're replacing that dividend income aren't we with the revenue the costs the profit on a line by line basis in the consolidated financial statement so it's a lot of information to take in isn't it hopefully you've, you've got it all there so all we do uh let's go through uh top of the page you've got the p you've got s you've got your adjustments and then your group figures okay uh key bit just to make sure that you don't make any mistakes six twelfths okay yeah that's what we need to prorate s's results by so what have we got uh well if we go through there and look at the revenue uh the revenue of p is one six four five isn't it uh that of the subsidiary is one two eighty but we need to prorate that by six twelfths does that give me six forty Okay, uh, there are no intra-company sales, there's no provisions for unrealized profit, so there's no adjustment there. So when I add across, does that give me 2285? Uh, cost of sales of the parent, is it 1205? Again, if I go back to the subsidiary, it's 990. I need to prorate that by 6 twelfths, does that give me? Four nine five. So when I add across and I consolidate on a line by line basis, does that give me one seven hundred? My gross profit, therefore, is then five eight five. Uh, my distribution costs. Uh, what have we got there? The parent, I think it's one hundred. Of the subsidiary, it's 70, which when prorated by 6 twelfths is there, is it as 35? Uh, let's just go back, double check. What have we got? 170 and 6 twelfths of 70. Half of 70 is your 35, isn't it? So that gives me distribution of 135. Uh, I've then got, is it my admin costs? So is it 90? of the parent the subsidiary is 50 so 6 twelfths of that is 25 and that's where you then need to be a little bit careful isn't it uh, because we need to go through there don't we and make sure that we adjust for the impairment it's $20,000 uh, it's the goodwill is at fair value so my impairment there, and this is where you've got to be careful, is one, you put it in S's column. So put whatever figure you've got in S's column. Two, make sure it's in brackets because it's an expense. And then three, don't prorate it by six twelfths. No, don't do that. Yeah, the revenues and the costs have accrued over the years. So we prorate those. The impairment can't have accrued over the year. Uh, the impairment just arises at the year end, doesn't it? as at a point in time when we prepare that impairment review when we go through there and use is 36 uh, to compare the carrying value uh, to the recoverable amount okay uh, you'll see more of that in strategic business reporting uh, so this impairment is an expense that arises at a point in time so you do not you do never prorate that impairment okay it can only have arisen since we gain control Okay, so it won't have a reason for the full year either. It just arises at the reporting date, so put it in in full. Uh, once you've got that, you can then work out, is it, that your admin expenses are also 135. And that gives me, is it my profits before interest and tax? Is that the, as 315, okay? Excellent. So we're proceeding along quite nicely, aren't we? Okay, we're, we're down to here. Your profits before interest and tax. I've next got my finance costs and is it my investment income? Uh, so 
We've got their finance costs. Is it there of 55 in the parent? Uh, is it there 30 in the subsidiary? So that means it's 15 uh, in the group accounts. So when I consolidate, does that go through there and give me 70? Uh, again, this is where you need to switch on. You've got your investment income. Is it 10 in the parent? There's actually nothing in the subsidiary. If there were to be in the subsidiary, you would include it on a line by line basis. Uh, but then what you've got now is the dividend from S, isn't it? So we own 80% of S. S paid 10,000. So we will have recorded eight. So we need to remove that eight from the consolidated accounts. Again, when we then go through and work that out, we now have, is it two? Okay. Uh, when I go through that, total that up, does that give me, is it two, four, seven? Uh, that is your profit before tax. Uh, the tax, 35 in the parent, is it 28 in the sub? So when we prorate it by 6, 12, so it gives me 14. Uh, so that gives me 49, which gives me profit for the year. Is it of 198? Excellent. There we go. Uh, what do I then need to go through and do? Uh, well, I now need to go through and split that 198, don't I? So that is then attributable to uh, the owners of the parent and the non-controlling interest. We own 80%, the non-controlling interest own 20. So you need to sum up S's column. Uh, when you sum up S's column, I think you end up, is it there with 36? 20% of 36, is that there at 7.2? The amount attributable to the owners of the parent, that's a balancing figure. So that's the 198 less the 7.2. Is that 190.8? Okay. There we go. How'd you find that? Reasonably straightforward, isn't it? I think it's a really good introduction. Uh, it's the type of question that you could conceivably get within an exam for, for maybe 10 marks within financial reporting. Uh, again, bits that are going to add to it. And the fact that we might have some intra-group sales, so we need to adjust the revenues and the costs. Uh, there might be some provision for unrealized profit to adjust for. There might be an associate within there. So there are bits and pieces that we need to pick up as we carry forward within the chapter. But re before we do, review that question. Make sure that you're happy with it. Uh, again, go back and make sure that you're happy with the pro forma and how that works. That's so, so important within an exam. Whether it's written or you're doing it on a computer, it doesn't matter. The same processes still follow. So rework that question. Make sure you're happy with it. And I'll see you then for the next lecture very soon. Bye for now.